Hello everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is a general energy reading for the day of Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. Before I get too deep into the day or to the, to the energies of the day, I do want to remind you guys that tonight I will be doing a live joint twin flame reading with my bestie of all besties, Miss good old Betsy. <laughs> yes, Betsy of Fearless Intuition and I will be doing a joint live twin flame reading tonight, uh, Tuesday, December 11th. Um, we are going live at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So, Set your reminders, whatnot. I'm definitely going to, you know, post something up. So just to remind people, but that is happening tonight. I'm very excited about it. We're going to have um, a discussion about, you know, what we've come to understand the twin flame journey to be. And we're just going to pull some energies and see where we are as a collective. Yes. All right. So. This is a general energy reading. This is not sign specific. This is not love specific. This is not really specific to anything. This is just what uh, spirit wants to discuss with us today, what the energies have to say. And, you know, we're just going to have a nice general discussion. Um, this doesn't have to be something that's resonating or happening for you now. It could happen in the future. It could have happened in the past. It may not happen at all. But even still, I do recommend that you guys like hang out, enjoy your coffee, your tea, whatever. Um, and let's just have a nice chat. Yeah. Okay. So without further ado, let's get to it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I'm just going to go ahead and give this a bit of a shuffle. Ooh, a shuffle. And we'll see what we've got. So I am seeing some purple. Um, and some of us may be going through, well, some of us may be getting a good amount of downloads right now. Um, but also some of us may be going through a bit of a third eye chakra opening, maybe a crown chakra opening, maybe even a throat chakra. But um, there's there's definitely some downloads coming through. Uh, you know, you may be experiencing ringing in the ears. Your eyes may be twitching. I know my eyebrow was twitching, has been twitching a little bit for the last few days, um, and I have been experiencing, you know, that high pitched, steady ringing in my ears. But actually, I, that's been going on for a long time, <laughs> a long time now. But um, yeah, so that could be happening. I'm starting to feel pretty fatigued again, so um, I really feel like like I I'm, I personally am going through a uh, download, you know, some downloads. So you may be experiencing that right now. That actually is a a thing that's really happening. Um, so if you are rest, you know, rest as much as you can. Um, take it easy. This is kind of a month just to take it easy anyway, but. You know, especially since it could be somewhat of a stressful month for some people, but that's okay. All right. One more shuffle, and then we will get started. It was a... That's weird. All right. Tuesday, December 11th. What you got for us today, Spirit? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Spirit. Tuesday, December 11th. Ooh, ooh, okay. What's that called? All right. And that's the last one. All right, cool. Oh boy. Underneath the deck is the Four of Swords. Okay. 
We got the Five of Wands, Justice, the Three of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Devil. <laughs> oh boy. And then, ooh, we also have the Eight of Cups. But the Eight of Cups is reversed. Okay, guys. So, there is an energy of needing to walk away from something. Uh, with this Eight of Cups here, there's a need to walk away from something, but someone's not doing it, or there's a blockage towards it is what I'm hearing. This could be some sort of family situation with the Ten of Pentacles, uh, a codependent family situation with the Devil and the, and the Ten of Pentacles. Uh, but there's also fear. Someone, I, uh, specifically, I'm getting someone is having trouble walking away some sort of fam from walking away from some sort of family situation because of money, finances, support in some way. There's and definitely energy of um, conflict, differing of opinion. I'm feeling like someone you're not really you're not really lining up in opinion or, or way of approaching things any longer. There's, an, there's this energy of justice here that's kind of just looming. I don't feel like justice has been served yet. It's just kind of hanging over the situation. It's like an overarching energy surrounding the situation, a major influencer of the situation. It's also influencing um, some sort of self-mastery here with the Three of Pentacles, okay? Someone refuses, and there are some energies here of someone refusing to walk away from a situation. Even though, you know, specifically, you may, this person may not get really any real support for who they are. Justice is, is not being served in that situation. There's a codependency that is keeping someone attached to some sort of family situation or some sort of financial situation. Maybe it's a job. Now, on the other hand, with the Four of Swords here, uh, there is an energy of somebody is like taking a break. And I'm really also, I'm getting that, you know, someone is taking something very seriously, okay? And they're not wanting to rush into any sort of hasty decision or whatnot. So with the Four of Swords energy, they're taking some time to rest, to meditate, to pray, maybe even to do some healing. Now with this Three of Pentacles here, and actually this Five of Wands, there is an element of, well, and justice as well, but specifically with these two cards here, there is an element of um, self-mastery in the face of opposition. There's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of bickering, there's a lot of differing of a people. There are a lot of people that are putting injecting themselves into a situation that don't necessarily have anything to do with it, don't really know what's... <laughs> they don't really know what... In some cases, they don't really know what they're talking about. And so they're kind of just stirring the pot and making matters worse for some situations. That there is a, definitely an attachment, a codependency, when it comes to some sort of financial situation. And with the Eight of Cups in reverse, I'm getting an energy of someone has needed to walk away for some time. 
and they refuse to do so. Now, this doesn't have to be financial. Um, it doesn't have to be family. This Ten of Pentacles could also be um, long-term goals. I'm picking up that for some of you, there is an energy of you wanting to have some sort of develop or, or have some sort of family with someone or have you have some sort of dream of a certain type of um, physical representation of what it is you desire. But in essence, it, it's you're needing to walk away from that to a certain extent. Uh, now, for some of you, you're in this Four of Swords energy and you are um, resting, meditating, praying, trying to figure something out. And now you're starting to realize that the view you have held of something, a specific way you wanted something to work out, is actually not something that's going to serve you. You're seeing the toxicity in it. You're seeing the limitation in it with the just with with devil here with the devil here and so now with this overarching energy of justice kind of surrounding the situation influencing the situation someone is starting to realize that they've got to walk away from what they thought things would be how they thought things should be it's conflicting though it's conflicting and it's probably a little scary between the Five of Wands and the Devil, but at the same time, with the Three of Pentacles, there is an energy of self-mastery here. So you're learning new things about yourself. You're learning, you're expanding, basically. Expanding your foundation. More pieces of yourself are coming together here. Now. If we're talking a financial situation, a work situation, um, there could be a, there there could be there an energy of um, you know with the three of pentacles. The three of pentacles is like talks about teamwork, but there's differing opinions, differings of opinions here with the five of wands, and I feel like there for someone for for whoever this part resonates with. These differing, differing, opinion, differing of opinions, the difficulties, the bickering, the arguing, the back and forth, the not really seeing eye to eye, too many cooks in the kitchen, could have been happening for some time. But with the Four of Swords energy, someone is kind of like pulling back, taking a break, and justice is being served here. Now, the justice could be in the form of, you know, once people go to their separate corners and have some time to cool off, then you can come back together with the Three of Pentacles and kind of work together, seeing more eye to eye at that point. Or some of you may be realizing that you need to branch off on your own and take, like, go into business for yourself in some way with the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles does talk about entrepreneurship. Um, and it could lead you, ultimately, the, the, the goal here is to move towards the Ten of Pentacles, what would be your ultimate fulfillment your ultimate career, that kind of thing. But there's fear here with the devil. Can I really do it on my own? But the devil is only adding to your limitations. So it's almost like you're seeing your opportunity for financial growth, um, financial abundance, abundance in career, your ideal career, and then you're seeing the the ego on the other hand saying, you know, you can't do that. Well, why can't, why not? Why can't I? Really, tell me, really tell me why I can't do that. Uh-huh. Okay. So either someone is gearing up to really move forward in a new direction, or someone is kind of resisting moving forward, or there also could be, in, and this is not... So much so, but there also is an energy of, with the Eight of Cups, someone has been walked away, so that has been left. But that's only for a very select few of you, okay? Use this Four of Swords energy wisely. Really rest and work on reconnecting with yourself. 
Because with this Five of Wands energy, it's like there are so many different people getting involved here, or at least there's so many different sides to the story, so many differing opinions and all that, that it's like you need to just rest and calm the mind so that you can think clearly, so that the energies of justice can really come into the situation and work things out. We could be talking divorce also, excuse me, just to put that out there. Ten of Pentacles and Justice. Ten of Pentacles could be a family situation. So that could be where the codependency is. Um, and in this case, if we're talking about some sort of codependent relationship, this would be like a relationship of convenience. But there's, there's, some, there's a need to walk away in some, in some way. But that's either blocked or like you may not be quite ready yet. Like the Eight of Cups could be that energy brewing underneath the surface because it is reversed. Or someone could have walked away already. That's that That is a definition that Spirit is saying. That is a part of the situation for some of you. Or someone is either having trouble walking away or is refusing to walk away because of this codependent energy. And in that case, you are really being guided to rest, to take a second, to just stop with the four of swords, to just pull back, rest, meditate, clear your mind, get down to the bottom of what you're truly feeling, what you truly need in your life, regardless of what everyone else tells you, five of wands and the devil, okay? All right, so I'm going to get some clarification now. We're going to start with the top row, the Five of Wands, Justice, Three of Pentacles. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, one more shuffle here. And then we'll get started. Okay. Five of Wands, Justice, Three of Pentacles. Please clarify, Spirit. Thank you so much. So look at this, guys. We're clarifying the Five of Wands, Justice, and the Three of Pentacles. We've got the Ten of Pentacles and the Devil. Again. <laughs> We've also got a bunch of other things that flipped over. Oh, boy. The Emperor. The Chariot. Judgment. Okay. Underneath the deck is... The King of Wands. All right. So, and then we have two cards that are face down. Um, I'll look at those in a second. Ten of Pentacles and the Devil. So, someone is attached to. There, there's a there's a toxic there's a toxic situation in this situ situation here. It's either family or it's financial. And I'm feeling like for many of you, or for a select number of you, this is like, um, this is a family legacy type situation. This could be ancestral also, karmic in nature. Uh -huh. But it, okay, so there are a few things that are happening that could be happening. Um, so someone really could be taking their power back, okay, with the, with the emperor here. And moving forward, moving away from the situation, taking their power back for sure. Or, uh, and then you also have judgment, that's with this, okay? Okay, so someone is hearing a call. There's some sort of call that's need that's being heard by the higher self, by the universe, and um, 
especially with this King of Wands here, someone is very much focused on what they want and determined to go after it. Now, the other thing that I'm getting with this is this is like uh, the, the patriarch of, a, of like some sort of family with the emperor, the leader, like the boss. I'm seeing, I'm, it's interesting because I'm seeing two sides of the situation, um, but in both sides, the emperor and the king of wands are the same person. So either this person is very egotistical, very only much caring about himself and his desires. And now this doesn't have to be a man, this could be a woman too, but this it's showing up as a masculine energy um, because it's a fixed energy. So this person could be very root, very stubborn, very rooted in their ways, stuck in their ways, very egotistical, very selfish. but also very successful, possibly very even financially stable. And that could be why this, part, this, this attachment is happening. It's almost like there's a, like a mistress situation going on, maybe like a sugar daddy or sugar mama situation going on. And I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, if that's, if that's what you're, if, that, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But what I'm getting here is that this situation is pretty abusive to a certain extent. Even if it's just, you know, someone take, being taken advantage of in the minors, in a minor sense, it's still, it just still doesn't feel like a healthy or balanced situation. It just feels one-sided. Okay. Um, now, this, the King of Wands and the Emperor could be the same person in that you're taking your power back. And you're removing yourself from this environment. We have two more cards here. Whoa. Okay. Very interesting. So we have the Queen of Pentacles and the Nine of Wands. So here we have another depiction of the mother and the father here. But what I'm getting with this Queen of Pentacles and the Nine of Wands is this is for the person that is taking their power back, taking their life back. They have this nurturing mother type energy within them that is being directed at themselves. And this person has been fighting for some time, battered and bruised with the Nine of Wands. So, let me do this. This is an internal energy. This Queen of Pentacles with the Nine of Wands. This is its internal energy. There's this perseverance to love oneself, to towards nurturing the self, putting the self in a better situation, getting the self into a better situation, moving forward into something that's much healthier. Much more, la much long, much more long-lasting. I'm hearing much a much happier situation, something that is more beneficial, more nurturing, more loving, more caring, more supportive of individuality instead of having to, in a sense, conform. There is some sort of conformity that's needing to happen here between the devil and the pen ten of pentacles with this sort of like family legacy type energy. I'm feeling. But someone is taking their power back here, and it is influenced by um, the feminine energies that are actively on the rise right now. Someone is starting to see their worth through the eyes of the Divine Feminine, and then that is empowering them to take their power back and move on to a new situation. And that's really beautiful. This could be the masculine energies that are going through this. This could also be some of us that identify with the feminine feminine side of things, but has more of their masculine energies coming forward, are working on healing and um, reconciling with their own inner masculine energies. It's like someone is learning to love themselves as much as the Divine Mother does. 
and so it's influencing influencing a change, influencing some sort of movement with the chariot, influencing some sort of action being taken with the uh, the emperor and the king of wands. Now, okay, here we go. I didn't even see it this way, but this could be the divine masculine in twin flame situations because we have both the emperor and the king of wands. Both of those cards are depictions of the divine masculine, in my opinion. Obviously, the emperor is the official one, but then I also see the king and queen of wands as the depictions of the divine masculine, divine feminine in the minor arcana. So someone, in, in that situation, someone is awakening to the toxicity in a family dynamic or a business situation, and, and it's long-standing. And I feel like this is something that they've been a part of for some time also. They've put a lot of time and investment into it, only to come to find out later on down the road that it's actually pretty toxic. Pretty toxic. It could be a family dynamic. Uh, whether this is like your mother and father situation or your your spouse and children type situation. It could be um, a business situation. It could just be a relationship that's built on convenience. And it's abundant with the Ten of Pentacles. Sure, it's abundant, but again, there's codependency at play which then in turn makes it toxic. <laughs> okay, so next, let's go to the next row, which is the Ten of Pentacles with the Devil. Since we were already talking about that, let's get some more clarification on it. Please, Spirit. Ten of Pentacles and the Devil. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right, all right, all right. So we've got the unknown, which has come out in the reverse here. Um, and to me, that's saying it's an energy of, what don't you get about this? <laughs> uh, six of Cups, Three of Swords, underneath the deck is the Ten of Swords. Okay, so it, it's, and it's interesting because it's not the... This unknown card here is not so much saying, what don't you get about this? I was just being silly. What it's saying is, is that things, things, somebody gets it now. Something has been revealed to them. This is something that has been like in the shadows for some time. They haven't really been able to grasp it, to be able to see it. But there was some sort of heartbreak that happened. Some sort of betrayal. Someone became aware of some sort of betrayal. And actually, I really feel like this could be, some of you could have become aware of some sort of betrayal from the past, maybe as a child, or maybe from a past lifetime, or just sometime in the past that created some sort of negative cycle here. Woo, look at that, we've got the counterpart now, King of Pentacles. Fixed energy. Um, this could be some this could be something that you learned from like say your father or a male figure um, early on in life or a, an experience that you had with some sort of male figure that kind of influenced you towards this cycle of codependency, possibly within a family or within some sort of financial situation. But with the unknown in reverse here, it's not unknown anymore especially with the Ten of Swords that's underneath the deck. So something has been revealed, something is understood now, and then and either it's influenced by, it's brought on or catalyzed by some sort of heartbreaking situation, lies, betrayal, deceit, backstabbing, something like that. Or... Wait, what was the other one? Either it's it was influenced by this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Or someone became aware of this. I do want to read the unknown card in reverse. I want to see if I'm missing anything here. There's actual... 
doesn't really say. Okay, well, all right. So this says, it can signify something from the past that one may not fully understand or something that will happen soon. And um, with this Six of Cups energy here, I think, yes, for some of you, this is something something that did happen in the past that now you have come to an understanding of. And it could be connected to a father or a masculine energy, whether male or female, it doesn't matter. But it's a masculine energy. It's a fixed energy. But also, this King of Pentacles here is another depiction of someone taking their power back, someone taking control of their situation. Hmm. But this is very much a, um, a financially stable uh, uh, individual. It could be someone that is very fixed in their energies, so it could be a Taurus. Potentially, the King of Pentacles is officially the Taurus card. But it's fixed energy, regardless. Now, this could be someone that's very protective and very loving. But in that sense, I'm seeing you taking on that energy, especially since you have the Queen of Pentacles up here, which is influencing some sort of nurturing energy. And so, with that, someone we have someone laying down the law of their situation, basically, with the King of Pentacles. Maybe even someone's trying to work it out in some sort of family situation, but that's pretty specific. All right, so let's move to the Eight of Cups now. Someone is having trouble walking away, or someone is not quite ready to walk away, or someone is refusing to, which also is having trouble, but someone might be refusing to walk away, or you could have walked away already, but let's get some clarification on this Eight of Cups, please, Spirit. Page of Wands, all right. Yeah, underneath the deck is the, hoo hoo, the Knight of Swords. So there's an energy of, I'm picking up, some of you don't wanna walk away until some sort of words have been said, until something has been somewhat quote unquote, hashed out. Um, there could be a lot of aggression and a lot of anger here. Someone could want to really fight. And that doesn't mean physically, it could just mean verbally. Most likely it means verbally with the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is about communication. It's swift movement though. So, but be careful, like pick your battles wisely because with the Knight of Swords, things could go south real quickly. Now, with the Page of Wands um, also clarifying this Eight of Cups in reverse, so it's like someone is generating or developing some sort of inspiration. The Page of Wands is also about, to me, in my opinion, it's also about self-discovery. <clears throat> Learning about oneself. Learning about what makes you happy, what fuels your passion. So the Page of Wands could be, and it's also, it's inspiration. So it's like you're, you're generating, someone is generating some sort of inspiration towards moving in a new direction or walking away. Interesting. I'm also getting something new here with this. Um, the Eight of Cups in reverse could be an energy of someone just running away from their problems. Interesting. Running away from the situation instead of like facing it head on and doing something about it. Well, now with the Page of Wands, in that case, you are getting some sort of inspiration to face whatever is happening. Like you're not, you're not running away from it any longer. And that in the okay, so that could be why someone was refusing to quote walk away from the situation. It wasn't that they weren't walking away from the situation; it's that they were hiding from it. They were not dealing with it, and so they could not separate themselves from it. 
because they weren't facing it. But now there's some sort of inspiration here with the Page of Wands. And I really feel like it has to do with whatever was revealed from the past that was almost like, it, this almost feels like an Ace of Swords aha moment where it's like the light bulb goes off and now you're like, okay, well now I get why that's happening. And because of that, that is giving you some sort of um, inspiration towards dealing with it, discovering more about it, discovering more about yourself in the process. Wow, that's pretty intense. All right, so let's get into the Oracle Guidance section. Best messages, please, spirit and animal guides. Let's see what we've got for today. Tuesday, December 11. Thank you so much, spirit. Okay, crow. And sea serpent. Oh, wait, we've got three. All right, okay. Underneath the deck is otter. So playfulness, being playful. Approaching life with a sense of wonder, that's a good thing. But we have Crow, Sea Serpent, and Hummingbird. And we're going to start with Crow. Here's Hummingbird. Here's Crow. All right. Crow. Spiritually strong, creative, and watchful. The crow has long been a symbol of magic. A crow personality is drawn to the supernatural and has a gift for seeing the unseen, knowing the unknown. It is said that the crow holds within its mind's eye the three realities, past, present, and future. Crow energy is potent and should only be tapped into when the mind is clear. Those with crow tendencies must balance their lives with a healthy diet, joyful friends, and regular self-study. When in balance, strong, a crow is strong, psychic, and clear. When out of balance, crow is ungrounded and hypersensitive. To bring into balance, one must practice daily meditation. And that daily meditation is absolutely going to help you with your endeavors of self-discovery here which crow speaks directly to regular self-study okay next we're going to move to hummingbird since it's in the same category here there we go hummingbird positive enthusiastic spiritually resourceful inside the tiny hummingbird resides an endless well of energy and positivity the hummingbird's secret is that it has learned where to gather nectar and it returns to these sources daily for nourishment and rejuvenation. This sacred elixir springs from many sources, but usually involves nature, creativity, and exploring spirituality. Follow the way of the hummingbird and you cannot go wrong. Every droplet of life becomes sweet, every moment worth savoring. When in balance, hummingbird is smart, curious, and loves to learn. When out of balance, hummingbird is pushy and insistent and sharp. To bring into balance, one must take a class. I, it's interesting because I'm also seeing hummingbird as a sort of energy that's doing its own thing, following its own intuition, going to the places that its intuition guides it to instead of, you know, sticking with the status quo or doing what, running with the flock almost. Because... It's not, it's rare that you, I don't think, I've, I have never seen a flock of hummingbirds all flying around together at the same time. I've only ever seen like one or two, maybe two of them are, in, are flying around together, but they're still kind of going in their own direction. Okay. And finally, we have sea serpent, which is a spirit message. 
sea serpent. Healing emotional wounds. Expressing desires. Uh, before I go any further, I am hearing autonomy. Autonomy was associated with that last message that was coming through with the hummingbird, right? I don't know if I said that, so I wanted to make sure I did so. Because it feels like it's going to resonate with this card, too. The sea serpent represents the energy of expression. Whether it's emotions, creativity, sensuality, or desire, the sea serpent helps us move and direct our energy into a healthy current. When the essence of this card is in balance, we express ourselves creatively and sexually without fear or shame. We know what we desire most. Our hearts are at ease and our relationships are meaningful and enduring. We loosen the grip of self-judgment and we let the cool waters of forgiveness in to heal our wounds. When the energy of the sea serpent is not yet activated, our emotions and creativity are left in the muddy waters. The current of expression stagnates in some areas of our lives and in other places it floods. It's important to remember, no matter what the waters of our emotional lives look like, the sea serpent loves us just the same. Like a mother, she wraps herself around us in a gesture of protection. She supports us as we learn to express our true natures. The sea serpent and the second chakra. The subtle energy of the sea serpent occupies the area of the Svadhisthana chakra. Located deep within the pelvic bowl, this chakra is known as our center of creativity and desire and is associated with the water element. Svadhisthana translates as in her own abode, indicating this chakra is the, is the home of the Divine Mother or Kundalini herself. And it's so crazy because I actually used that term when I was talking about this Queen of Pentacles here. I was saying someone is learning to love themselves the way the Divine Mother would. And here you have Sea Serpent. <clears throat> well, gee, that's beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to close the reading today with one card from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. All right, one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for today. Oh, geez. <laughs> Let's try that again, guys. Let's try that again. All right. Here we go. Closing message, please. Spirit for today, Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. Just one card, please. Spirit. One card. Closing message. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, there is a message here also. Um, in the card underneath the deck, it's Ascended Master Merlin and Mystic Merlinite. Read the energy. And that's really important for those of you that are really going through this transition right now, um, especially with the purple energy that I was picking up on in the beginning of the reading. <laughs> in the beginning of the reading, um, we're learning, we're becoming more psychic aware. We're learning to tune into our intuitions. And so you're really being asked to read the energies around you right now and feel it out. Like, is this something that you want to be... A part of any longer you know learn start start doing that because everybody has these abilities okay some of us are a little stronger than others sure but you can't it doesn't mean that you can't develop them on your own and it and it doesn't have to look or feel or sound or be experienced the same way someone else experiences it okay you have your own unique connection to yourself to your higher self to your intuition to your gifts all right Okay, so our closing message for today is card number four, Archangel Melchizedek and Selenite, Divine Perfection. We bring you the gift of divine perfection. As you receive our gift, you will feel a wave of great peace move through your heart and mind. You will know you are exactly as you were divinely designed to be, that your life is proceeding in perfect timing and that all is well. If there has been a matter causing you concern, allow us to bless that situation with the peaceful grace of the divine now. You shall receive the perfect resolution of that matter in accordance with unconditional love. There is no need to judge yourself for any decision or choice you have ever made. Forgive yourself and others now. 
There are so many blessings for you to receive and no need for you to hold on to anything out of fear, shame, guilt, or regret. Free yourself as you surrender into realization of divine perfection. I want to read a little bit more of this. As you grow on your spiritual path, you will eventually become aware of a paradox, two apparently conflicting truths, both of which you resonate with at a deeper level. This can cause some temporary confusion until you realize they do not conflict, but actually support each other. On one hand, you will be seeking growth and development. You will want to, ref you will want to fulfill your divine potential and manifest your life purpose, sacred mission, and divine destiny. This is the path of evolution, where you are willing to learn and grow through your experiences. You will feel as though you are leaving your, quote, old self behind and becoming a new version of yourself, more aligned with your inner spiritual nature and life purpose. This process may occur many times throughout the course of your lifetime. Hmm. In earth medicine, the snake is considered a symbol of transformation because it sheds a skin no longer needed and emerges anew. You will feel that this happens symbolically as you grow spiritually. Through that process of transformation, you become an increasingly radiant, embodied divine being. It is similar to the acorn becoming a mighty oak tree or the caterpillar eventually emerging as an exquisite butterfly. It is the fulfillment of your innate spiritual blueprint and it happens as you experience change, growth, healing, and transformation. This is an authentic aspect of the spiritual path for advanced souls capable of considerable and sometimes even radical personal transformation, much willpower, energy, and focus will go into this aspect of the spiritual path. This is as it should be. Those capable of growth have developed that spiritual ability over lifetimes. To engage fully with your potential for spiritual growth and personal transformation will inspire others with what is possible whilst bringing you deep, soul-satisfying joy. However, there is a second truth on the spiritual path that applies to all beings, even those gifted with the ability to transform themselves. This second truth is perfection. There is nothing to do, no change to go through, no healing that needs to take place, because in the inner truth of your nature, you are already divine, whole, and perfect. Where evolution is based on the principle of progress, Perfection is based on the principle of divine wholeness, which has been and always shall be complete. According to the truth of perfection, there is nothing to fight and nothing to resist, only the miracle of love's creation to witness in all its wild beauty and deep mystery. Oh my goodness, I'm going to end up reading this whole thing. I'm going to read this last paragraph. So does this mean you should not attempt to evolve, that you should, not, you should give up your personal growth and spiritual development work and simply be as you are in utter bliss? Actually, you are here to live the divine paradox of both these truths. Use the inner knowing of the divine wholeness of you to bring a you peace as you evolve and grow on your divine path. Evolution is ultimately part of the perfection of the divine plan. As you grow, you become more able to realize the perfection of your innate spiritual nature. Woo! That was a whole lot. But actually, it was quite perfect. So I definitely needed to read it. So there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you all have a fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you guys both tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a joint twin flame reading live uh, with me and Betsy of Fearless Intuition. And I also look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Mwah! Bye!